growing a small account. This is the criteria that you should follow when growing a small account. You know, I always like to think about it as beating the house, as essentially being the house. As in, if we are in a casino, you wanna put the odds in your favor. In a small account, all we wanna to try to do is try to be the house. Put the odds in our favor in every single trade. So how can we do that? How can we put the odds in our favor every single trade? Because that's what you hear all the time. People say, oh, you wanna be a day trader, you wanna be a stock trader, so you wanna be a professional gambler. No, I don't wanna be a professional gambler. I wanna be the house. I wanna be the people, again, I wanna be the pit boss. I wanna be the person dealing out the cards, not receiving them. I wanna be the person collecting the dice and sending them away, not again the person picking them up and rolling them. I wanna be the person that, again, is looking down at the cameras and, again, saying who is cheating, who's, again, not, I don't wanna be the person sitting on the chair. That's not what we wanna do. We gotta think about it. If you wanna think about the stock market as a casino, you have to put the odds in, the, in your favor. So, how can we do that? We gotta trade in the right times, we gotta trade the right stocks, and we gotta trade in the right market conditions, right? So we already talked about it. Be the house, right? So, if we go back to these different points, trade in the right times. First things first, if you wanna be able to grow an account, you must trade during that first hour of the day. That first hour of the day is going to be the hottest time in the market. And a little formula is always going to be volume equals activity, which equals profit, right? If you can trade when there's a lot of movement, you will be able to make the most amount of money possible. When stocks are going up and down and up and down and up and down, you can make a lot of money going up and down. When a stock is moving sideways, you can't make any money whatsoever. I personally don't care if a stock spikes or if a stock dumps, I just wanna see a stock moving because when a stock is moving is when I can be able to make the most amount of money possible. So, when do we really wanna be trading? Well, if we again kinda of look at volume equals activity and activity equals profit, we have our time on the bottom, we have our volume measure at the sidebar right here, and let's say nine, 10, 11, 12, one, two, three, and four, right? These are Eastern times, 9 a.m., 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 12 o'clock. The hottest point is always going to be right at the start of the day. Right at the start of the day is always going to be the time that everyone is here, everyone's excited, everyone wants to trade, everyone's playing the hot press releases. Volume is at its peak. And when volume's at its peak, that's where you can make the most amount of money. As the day and as the morning goes on, volume starts diminishing. And why is that? Will traders win? Traders lose? Traders wrap up their day. A lot of traders I know only trade the first hour of the day and then go out and enjoy life. They trade the first hour, they win 500, win 1,000, win 2,000. Maybe it's a bad day, they lose 200, lose 500. And they say, okay, hey, I'm done. I'm gonna go back tomorrow. Then you go out and do whatever you want in your life. That's part of stock trading. To not be constricted to a nine to five, to not have a boss, to not, again, have to drive to an office. You can work wherever you want and make a better salary than an eight hour shift. Then the stock again falls all the way down towards 12. 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, then it starts spiking back on up. So why is all this movement right here? Why is there movement at the start of the day? Well, we have, again, the hot press releases, PRs, press releases. We have big volume as traders are awake, right? So let's just say traders are eager to start the day back on up. All right, we have again press releases, we have traders, we have global events. Maybe something has happened again over in the European markets, maybe something happened over in China, right? And then really it's just when emotions are going to be the highest. Emotions are gonna be the highest as traders are going to be excited to be back. Traders are gonna be getting in, getting out of their overnight swing trades. Now again, the day fades on off. Lunchtime, lunchtime is the time we never want to trade, right? Lunchtime is the time we wanna avoid because there's no more hype. Then at the end of the day, we have traders getting out of positions. Traders are getting out of stocks before the day ends. We also have, again, traders that are jumping in on plays for a possible swing trade. We have traders, again, maybe jumping in for after hours trading. But the thing is, you also, you, since you have traders getting out, stocks are moving down. You have traders getting in to hold overnight, stocks are moving on up. And then on top of that, you just have day traders basically just feeding off the momentum, being like, hey, yeah, let's buy that. I want it to go on up as well. So lunchtime, there's nothing. Lunchtime is from 12 to two. On the West Coast, that would be what? From like nine to 11, that's the slow time. So it's either you wanna trade in the morning or you wanna trade in the afternoon. Okay, guess what? We are putting the odds a little bit in our favor. That is absolutely awesome right there. Now, let's keep moving a little bit more, all right? Let's talk about the share size. 
Everyone always asks, Deck, how many shares should I buy? Well, the honest truth is, you should buy at least 500 to 1,000 shares on every single trade. Every single trade you should be putting in your entire account. Whoa, 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 wait, what? Every single trade, you have to be putting in your entire account. Tech, what do you mean put in my entire account? You know, I, I don't think I can do that. I don't think I should do that. No, that's what you should do because you have to do that. I already talked about this earlier. You are going to make roughly 5% on a great day trade of whatever you invest in. So if you invest $10,000 on a trade, get ready. You are going to make probably about $500. That's awesome, right? If you invest $1,000 on a trade, on a great trade, you'll make about 50 bucks. As a new trader, you may not make anything, or as a new trader, you may make 10, 20 bucks. The issue is when new traders wanna open up an account with $2,000 and aren't happy until they make $1,000. It's extremely difficult to make 50% on a trade, right? That, that would be an extreme, that's the same as investing $100,000 and trying to make $50,000 from that one trade. Traders, again, make 10% long-term investors. When you invest in the SPY and you say, I just want my money safe and sound, you are going to be making 10% throughout the entire year for a 12-month period. Imagine if you had $1,000, you jumped in on a play, and by the end of the year, you were up 100 bucks. 12 months go by, and you made $99, right? You need to understand, hey, I got to put money in to get money out of this. If you have 2,000 bucks in your account, you better put in all $2,000 in your account because you're gonna be making maybe about $100 per trade, $150 per trade if it's a good trade. And you need those small gains to just keep adding and adding and adding and adding and adding. And that's why, again, opening up with only $500, what can you really expect to make? When you open up a $500 account, team, I mean, you're making, what, 25 bucks, right, on a great trade? That's why, again, millionaires, you ever see like, oh, rich just keep getting more rich? Well, if you invest $1 million on a trade, you can make $50,000 in a day. Now you have $1 million and $50,000, right? So, I mean, when you have a million bucks, you can make $50,000 a day. That sounds pretty nice, doesn't it? When you have $2 million, you can make $100,000 a day. But when you got $10,000, you need to understand that's gonna be about $500 a day. Still pretty nice. You got $5,000 a day, a 5,000. You're gonna be making around $250 a day. But a lot of people always say, well, Deck, people always say only invest about 10% of your account. Maybe on a long-term investment with people who have over 50,000 bucks, but when you have, again, a total of $2,000 and people say, again, invest 10%, okay, you're investing $200, and now, again, you're supposed to get 5% return. What are you making? You know, you're making $2.50, right? It's like, you know, you're not gonna make any money whatsoever. You need to be buying at least 500 to 1,000 shares. Well, Deck, that means I can only trade stocks that are $3, $4 or below. Okay, so be it. Then that's what you have to be doing, right? So for day trading and for trading, let's say stocks that are $10 or lower, I would like you to have at least 500 shares on every single trade. That means every single penny that moves, you make five bucks. If a stock moves 10 cents, you make 50 bucks. If you have a thousand shares, if a stock moves a, th uh, if the stock moves a dollar, you make a thousand bucks. So, you know, it just comes down to the more shares you have, the more money you can make. Stick with, again, 500 to 1,000 shares. If you have any less you know, than that, you're probably not going to be making too much money, right? And that's something that uh, I want you guys to gauge. Now, if you're just practicing and wanting to do some real trading and feel a little emotion, do 10 shares and 20 shares. Just don't expect to actually grow an account with 10 to 20 shares, right? So, so far, again, this criteria we have is giving yourself the best chance of succeeding. Well, we wanna give ourselves the best chance of succeeding by trading in the right times. We've established that. We wanna, again, be able to uh, trade uh, the right stocks. We're gonna talk about that. And we also wanna be able to trade uh, the right share sizes. So let's go over this a little bit more here, team. And let's talk about what stocks do we wanna be looking at? Well, let's talk about it. Well, we do not wanna buy any stock that has spiked more than 50 cents without any sort of pullback or some sort of consolidation. Don't let emotions take over just because you see a spike and anything that goes up, understand that it will come back on down. 
So when I say this team, already we're just trying to figure out, okay, Deck, I'm trading with about 500 to 1,000 shares. That puts me on stocks that are about $5 and below if you have an account that's under 5,000 bucks. I'm going to be, again, trading stocks that are within the first hour and a half or the last hour and a half, preferably the first hour of the day. Now we're starting to put the odds a little bit more in our favor of seeing success. Now, again, we're only going to want to be trading low float plates. So again, maybe, again, lower the, uh, lower the float, the better. Look for stocks that are under 5 million million in float. Now you guys have already seen how amazing stocks that have low floats can go on big rips and runs. I mean, if you take a look over at MOBQ, MOBQ went from $1.60 and spiked all the way up to $3. That means if you had a $1,600 in your account, you could have, again, bought 1,000 shares, saw the stock go from $1.60 to three bucks and could have made $1,400 on this play. That's pretty incredible to see. And that's just from, again, today alone. This is not me looking through different research and going and showing an example from three years ago. That was this morning. So, you know, you can see these low float plays are the ones that get the hype. Well, Deck, what's a low float stock? Float are going to be the shares that are, again, offered to the public. The lower the float, the higher the demand, the bigger the spike. So, again, this would get into our volume lesson, volume and float. But essentially, just go to Yahoo Finance, click statistics, scroll on down, and look at float. Notice, this is 2.4 million in float. You want to see some other examples of that? You know, take a look at INDO. INDO, stock went from $4 and shot all the way up to $80. That was the recent supernova as well. INDO going on a $76 spike. Click statistics, take a look at the float. The stock again is 1.82 million in float. Yesterday, we had S, uh, SB, SBFM, I believe it was. And guess what SBFM did? If we take a look at this play, this stock, of course, was able to open on up and went on a stock, a spike from $2 all the way up to $683. That means if you had a $2,000 account, you could have added upwards of $4,000 in your account and turned your $2,000 into $6,000 if you nailed this play. You know why? Because SBFM, type it on in, SBFM is a lower float. The float are just the shares available for us to be able to trade. When you have a stock that has 5 million or under, or 6 million, again, pushing it a little bit, you can see that these plays can rip and run. Because when you have a very small amount of shares available, right? You have a very small amount of shares available. And let's just go back to today, which was, um, what's today's top gainer? Today's top gainer is MOBQ, right? MOBQ, this you know play that only had 3 million float and we have 54 million people, essentially, 54 million shares traded out of, again, just that 3 million in float. Well, that's when you get a huge rip and a huge run. The volume, I always think about it, it is the shares traded from hand to hand, but I just think about it as people. It makes it very simple and very easy. Usually 119,000 people play the stock. Today, 54 million people play the stock. Now again, that's not the correct definition, but that's how I like to think about it, just to make it simple and easy, just supply and demand. We got four million shares available, 54 million people are fighting over those four million shares. That's why the stock is now up 53%. Uh, so, you know, MOBQ, this has been a very good and a very solid play. And it all started at the start of the day, right? When these hot press releases come on out. So now we're starting to get a little bit of traction here. And I hope you guys are, again, writing some of this down, just saying to yourself, all right, Deck, so I want to be doing what? I want to be trading stocks that are within, again, the right time frame, right? We want to be trading in pre-market or the start of the day or that last hour of the day. Uh, of course, want to be having discipline. So we've gone over so far, trade the right stocks, trade at the right time, trade in the right market conditions. Now, now, let's keep moving here, team. The hottest times to trade, we just reviewed, but we do want to talk about pre-market. It really comes down to the earlier you wake up, the better chance you have of having success. And the reason why is because when you wake up early, you can beat everyone. Beat everyone to the punchline. When we see a stock come out with hot news, most traders wait for the stock to spike, then they buy in on it, and that's usually what, why they lose. If you wake up at seven o'clock, don't wait until nine o'clock to buy the stock at its peak. You have to know and be willing to buy that play. Confidence, 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 confidence. If you see a hot press release come on out, be willing to buy in on it. You are the first one awake. You are the first one in on this play. Everyone else will buy on top of you most likely as they wake up. So whenever I see a hot press release, I'm willing to jump in on these plays because maybe it is going to turn into a big supernova. Maybe it is going to turn into a big rip. You have to be willing to give these stocks a chance. Now, Deck, let's say I jump in on a play. I jump in on a stock. What should I be doing? Well, I should always, again, be having a stop loss. 
If you have a $4,000 account, you should never take any sort of losses larger than 200 bucks. 200 bucks should always be your magic area on where you guys look to get out. So if you have 4,000 bucks and you guys take a $1,000 loss, does that sound like that makes sense? A 25% you know, drop on your account, right? No, that's not what you guys want. I always think about it as stock trades are basically like getting into relationships. Has anyone ever been in a relationship that you just said, hey, this isn't working out? Has anyone ever gone on a first date? First date, and what did you say? First date, it didn't work out. You guys just didn't have a good time. You guys didn't click. You guys didn't click in any sort of way. Does anyone say, man, I really did not have fun on that first date. <sighs> I'll go out with her again. And then you go out with her again. And you say, man, this is awful. I hate this. And then again, the next day, she said, and she texts you and say, hey, you want to hang out again? And you say, oh, I hate this girl. Yeah, let's hang out again, <laughs> right? You know, it's like, it doesn't make any sense. Why would you keep seeing a person that is making your life uh, you know, more miserable? Why would you keep seeing a person that is not great? Imagine you start dating this person now. And now two, three, five years go down the road and you're like, I'm not even happy. I literally, every single day, I, I, my, my favorite part of the day is when I go to the bathroom because I don't have to be with this person. That's like, you know, that's how I think about it with stocks. If you are literally losing your money, losing your money, losing your money, losing your money, just get out of the play. You should, again, never have a loss larger than $200 because it's just not worth it. You know why? Because the moment you say, hey, hey, we're done. I'm breaking out with you. We're over. I'm sorry. I just don't want to be with you anymore. Well, guess what? Now the floor is open for maybe the next person you do meet. You go on a first date and you love her. And again, you have a great time. And you want to, again, stay with that play and stay with that you know, person. Well, that's awesome, right? I would stay with a person as long as I can, as long as they st- it kept making me happy. I would stay in a stock as long as I can, as it kept making me happy. So the thing is, cut losses quickly. If you are down 200 bucks, get out of the play. Move on, right? There's a million other plays out there, right? Same exact thing if you're in a relationship. If you're not happy and it stinks, just be like, hey, I'm done with you. Okay, let's go ahead and find someone else. So don't have your whole entire account get blown up over one play. If it's not working out, move on from it. Don't have your whole life ruined for the next 80 years because you're with the same person that you don't like. Just break up with them and move on, right? So $200 max stop loss. Put that in big lettering. $200 $200 max. I will not lose more than $200 on one trade. So what this comes down to is we want to have 80% re- reward, 20% risk. Have an education behind this. So let's just think about this, team. How can we have more reward than we have risk? Well, let's just think about some different situations. If a stock, let's say, let's just keep with this here. If a stock opens up right here and goes on a massive spike, is it a good idea for us to buy the stock? The answer is no, there's more risk than reward. Why, Deck? Well, I want it to go up higher. That's great that you want it to go up higher, but that doesn't mean it's going to happen. I want to open up my refrigerator, and you know what? A million dollars falls out of my refrigerator, and on top of it, like a beautiful plate of hot wings also falls on top. But again, that's not going to happen. You know why? Because I don't have a million dollars in my refrigerator, and again, we don't have any hot wings either. So the thing is, you know, that's just not going to happen, right? In most cases, when you see a stock spike up 100% or higher, get ready as this stock is most likely going to have a pullback. So you buying up top definitely has more risk than reward. Now let's say a stock goes on a 100% climb and let's say starts dropping and starts falling and the stock falls about, let's say 40% or 50%. And you see again that this stock has a very strong support line where maybe the stock has bounced off in the past, maybe it hit as resistance in the past. And you say to yourself, hey, Deck, I want to go ahead and I'm going to look for an entry at this support line on this very hot stock that has just spiked 100%, now has fallen 40%. Well, what do new traders think? New traders say, oh, the stock is dumping, the stock is done, the stock is over with. Right? No, but this is actually when the reward's in your favor. You have a hot stock with big volume. You have a hot stock inside the right time frame. You have a hot stock that we know has a good credible press release, a good PR behind it, and the stock is having a pullback. So guess what? You buy it, and now the stock starts moving itself on up. You have good reward. And now guess what happens? Now you can say to yourself, now I'm going to sell. But what does a new trader now do? Now a new trader says, Deck! The stock is back up towards the high of the day. Let's go ahead and buy it. Okay, I'm buying it right here. And then you make the same mistake as the stock starts coming right back on down. And they say, oh my goodness, every time I buy a stock, I lose a play. Now the stock is over with. Now the stock is done with. Now again, the stock is over with and no one's going to trade it. And you say, well, wait a minute. The, The support line's right here. And now the stock starts bouncing back on up. Your goal is to just always try to do this, team. 
80% reward, 20% risk. Think about a trade before you do it. Just think about it. Think about a trade before you do it. 80% reward, 20% risk, right? That's what we wanna be thinking about. We wanna stay away from those unnecessary times, trading in slow times, trading on a Friday, trading on emotions. I know again right now what time is it? You're coming up towards around 11.42. A lot of traders obviously wanna trade, especially if you haven't made any sort of money, but you're actually moving into the slowest time. So right now, team, we are trying to do everything we can to put the odds in our favor to be able to grow an account. And what we mean by that is we want to do it in the right time. We want to buy enough shares. We want to have the right mark conditions. We want to make sure we're using our head. We want to think about what strategy works best for us. Now, that was another thing we talked about, market conditions, team. Well, it takes time to grasp how market conditions are. But a great way to just grasp how market conditions can be is take a look over on the SPY. If the SPY has been crashing for the last few days. Expect maybe today to be a little bit slower. When you see the SPY ripping and running and popping and climbing, expect more enthusiasm, energy, emotion. Stocks move up because people buy them. Stocks move down because people sell them. So the thing is, when you sit, take a look at the SPY and you see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, eight green days in a row, guess what happened during this time? where we saw the SPY moving and running and investors are very happy. When investors are happy, they're willing to put their money out. And when they put their money out, guess what we could see? We could see INDO going on this massive climb. And we could see MXC going on this massive rip and run. And we could see HUSA going on this huge rip. And we can see again all these other plays, you know, like HYMC. This play again also had this very nice pop when the markets are of course climbing and the markets are rising. But today, we're having a large red candle gap down into another red candle today. So that's why we did see some rips in pre-market. But when we take a look over on the SPY right here, everything's fading. So do we have any big plays today? You know, our, some of our big plays today were MOBQ. And MOBQ had a nice morning rip, but then again, faded on off. We also had BBAI. BBAI today, I believe. This stock had a big, again, morning pre-market spike, but then just faded itself on off. Understand market conditions. If basically the markets are falling, there's not a lot of confidence in the market, people are a little bit scared and nervous, Why? how can we see where traders are scared and nervous? We can go to CNBC.com. We can see again right here, uh, concerned about inflation. We could see if we take a look, let's go down this a little bit, ba 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 where it says like stocks are falling. That's usually what I'll say. I'll say, I'll say, you know, surging interest rates. It'll say stocks are falling because, you know, we're scared. 10 year old uh, yield is highest level since 2019. So I always like to look at um, uh, European stocks uh, close lower amid of hawkish Fed concerns, right? So we just always want to make sure that we're understanding everything that's going on. We just want to, you know, kind of get a grasp on which way emotions are at. When emotions are high, look to go long. And when emotions are low, and you know, scared and concerned, look to short, right? So that's why a lot of our plays today didn't hold up very well. So right now, when we're talking about how to grow a small account, when should you trade? First hour or last hour? How many shares should you buy? At least 500 to 1,000. Okay, what stocks or how do I know uh, um, when, when to trade a stock or uh, what stocks to be playing? Well, and most of the time you wanna play the top gainers on the day, the stocks that have the most volume, but we want to try to beat the mob by finding those hot press releases. Now you might be saying, well, Deck, how do we find those hot press releases? How do we beat the mob? Unfortunately, again, that's going to be different lessons. We have all these lessons over on tradecaster.com over in the video library where you guys have. Again, okay, Deck, how can I beat the, uh, beat the mob here? Well, that's going to be going into our press release lessons and you know, we have our chart setup lessons and we're going to be having our you know, options lessons and our Deckmar trade strategy lessons. You know, those are going to be where you guys want to be uh, reading, uh, reading into. We also know if we want to grow a small account, we also want to be uh, make, uh, excuse me, having a stop loss at least $200, right? $200 is the max where we say, hey, we got to get out of these plays. So these are all things I just want to be able to break down. And now you should have some great bullet points on, again, a strategy to be looking at. Now, from this area, you got to start finding what strategy you like. Do you guys like to short more? Do you guys like to dip buy more? Do you want to try to find breakouts, which is a little risky? Do you guys want to look for swing trades and then really expand from there? But growing a small account, Think about it, team. It all just comes down to putting those odds in your favor, okay? Putting those odds in your favor, doing that in the right time, doing that in the right market conditions, doing that with the right amount of shares, 
doing that on the right place with volume and also making sure that you have an 80% reward, 20% risk, okay? You guys got this, you guys can do this, and I know again, every single trader is going to crush it. One last thing I wanna go over here, team, just by putting the odds in your favor, is you guys can always put the odds in your favor. Let's just look at the best play today. Right here, we do have ADN, right? ADN, let's put the odds in our favor here. Now, ADN, how do I like to always see what the odds are? I always say to myself, all right, where is resistance? Resistance right now is at 380, okay? Where's support? Support right now, is back down towards this trend line. So when we break this on down, what can we see? We break this on down, we figure this play on out right here, and we say to ourselves, all right, how do I know if I have more reward than risk? We have at this moment, it's at 377. We have three cents that we can climb, and if the stock's at 377, the stock has room to fall back on down towards around 365. Now, if we have uh, 365 support and the stock's at 377, we have 12 cents to fall. So where do we have more risk and reward? Tell me team. We have three cents to profit. We have 12 cents to fall on down. Do we have better risk or reward? The obvious answer is there's more risk on this play. Why is there more risk? Well, I, if I bought a thousand shares, I could lose $120 to essentially make $3, right? Or $30. It's I can make $30 or I can lose $120. That's you know your risk and reward. Now, if you're saying, well, Deck, I have a I have a plan. I'm looking for the stock to you know be able to squeeze and break on through and look for that breakout. Okay, if you have a plan, again, follow your plan. But the easy way I always look for, and again, it does have that ascending triangle pattern, so that's why it's looking for a pop here. But the way that you should always be looking at a lot of your stocks is just by doing that team. Say to yourself, all right, Deck, um, let's look for another, you know, hotter play today, or let's go with you know, MOBQ. Now, MOBQ, this play at this time is looking weak. It is looking weaker at this time. But what do we have? We do have top resistance or top resistance at the VWAP. The VWAP right now is, let's just make it easy, 250, okay? VWAP is going to be 250. Our res uh, support line at this moment is going to be 215. So at this moment, if we take a look at this, and let's say the stock is at 223, nice, easy. Stock's at 223. How much reward do we have if the stock spiked on up? Well, if it went from 223 up towards again 250, that would be 27 cents. Let's just say I buy 1,000 shares. That means I can make $270 if the stock moves itself back on up. How much am I risking if the stock comes down to support? Well, if it goes down to support, that would be right around, what area was that, 210 I believe it was, 215. So if the stock has resistance at 215 and the stock's at 223, that means I'm risking $80. So look at this, guys. I have potential to make $270. I'm risking $80. Now, why do I say that? Because if the stock cracks support, you got a stop loss. You're out. If a stock breaks through resistance, let's say if you're shorting the play, right? You know, you got to be able to get out of the play. Or if you're holding that play on the long side, you can keep holding it even more. But, you know, we're just inside the channel. I'm not talking about breaking out or dropping underneath it. But essentially, if you're inside this channel, you have $270 you can make and you have $80 you can lose as it could fall back down. So this would be a play that you have more reward than risk if you bought in right now. But you also got to take in some other factors, such as it has been fading throughout the day. It is a little bit weaker right now. It, we are moving into lunch hours. So there are other factors you need to bring in. But that's a way that I always like to just kind of take a step back and say to myself, do I have more reward than risk here? That's how I always like to, uh, that's how, how I always like to you know, think. Do I have more reward than risk? Look at the chart, find support, find resistance. How much room does it have to fall? How much room does it have to climb back on up? All right? So... Awesome job, awesome work. I hope this lesson was a great kind of a bullet point overview and help you guys be able to see that 80-20 and where you guys really have the best chance of support and be able to make it the most amount of money. If you have any questions on this, please let me know. As always, happy to help you guys on out.